Welcome to the Hearthstone Educational Video Series. In this module, we will discuss the basics of the Maxitrol G6R remote control. First, we will cover the physical configuration of the handset, followed by navigation through the feature screens, and conclude with operating the stove in manual mode. Depending on model and manufacturing date, your Maxitrol GV60 valve system equipped Hearthstone appliance shipped with one of two remote control handsets. Though they appear different, both are in fact G6R remotes in slightly different housings. Navigation and use are identical. Both the remote control and the receiver on the stove require batteries, which are included but not installed. Please follow the instructions in your owner's manual to install the four AA batteries in the receiver. The remote requires one 9-volt battery, which is installed in a slide panel on the rear of the remote. To install the remote control battery, remove the rear slide cover, install the 9-volt battery on the fob, gently insert the installed battery into the remote control and reinstall the cover. After battery installation, the LCD screen will display the blinking clock. To set the time of day, press the large flame button to increase the hours, and press the small flame button to increase the minutes. When the desired time of day has been entered, press the off button. The remote control is now ready for use. The Maxitrol G6R remote control display screen provides the user with several data points. In the manual operation mode screen shown here, the upper left hand corner indicates the current room temperature. To the right, the battery level indicator. Below that, the time of day. Below that, the fan level indicator. And along the bottom of the screen will be displayed the operational mode selected by the user from the remote control. The Maxitrol G6R remote control has four buttons to access and set all available features. Each button has multiple functions depending on which features the user is accessing. We will start with the basic functions and move up from there. The Set button allows the user to navigate between the available screens and allows the user to access feature set points. The Off button turns the appliance completely off and also works in conjunction with the Large Flame button to turn the appliance on. The Large Flame button increases burner flame height. This button also allows the user to set certain features. The small flame button decreases burner flame height and also allows the user to set features. As mentioned, navigation between the remote screens is performed by pressing the set button. These features include several options for the three modes controlling how the stove operates, access to the fan and light control screens if they are available on your appliance, and the ability to set the remote control clock and all data points associated with the operational modes. The three operational modes available for your appliance are manual, temperature, and timer. Operating your appliance in manual mode will be discussed later in this video. For now, please note that screens applicable to temp and timer modes will be shown while navigating through the remote and details on setting these features are available in Modules 2 and 3 of this video series. When the appliance is manually ignited using the remote control, the remote automatically enters the Manual Operations mode. The screen is shown here and we will begin navigation from this point. Pressing the Set button once scrolls to the Daytime Temperature screen. Pressing Set again scrolls to the Light Control screen. Pressing Set again scrolls to the Fan Control screen. Pressing Set again scrolls to the Nighttime Temperature screen. Pressing Set again scrolls to the Timer screen. 
and pressing set once more returns you to the manual operation screen. The G6R remote control has several features accessible by pressing a combination of buttons. To change the clock at any time, simultaneously press and hold the large and small flame buttons until the time flashes. Press the large flame button to set the hour and press the small flame button to set the minutes. Press off to exit this screen or simply wait for the auto timeout feature to engage. If your appliance is equipped with a dual burner, a device called the split flow control valve allows fuel to flow to either all or part of the main burner. If the valve is on, the entire burner will ignite. If the valve is off, only part of the burner will hold flame. This feature is primarily for aesthetic purposes, but is accompanied by a change in overall heat output of the appliance. If so equipped, to allow the entire burner to ignite while the appliance is in operation, turn the split flow valve on by simultaneously pressing the set and large flame buttons. The split flow valve may be turned off by pressing the set and small flame buttons, thus allowing only part of the burner to remain lit. The user may choose to operate the remote control in Celsius or Fahrenheit modes. Celsius mode also switches the clock format to 24 hour. To select between the two modes, simultaneously press the off and small flame buttons. Now that we are familiar with navigation around the remote control, let's discuss manual appliance operation. Manual mode allows the user to control the appliance ignition and flame height manually. When commanded to do so from the remote, the appliance will increase or decrease flame height based on gas flow, not temperature. To manually start your appliance, simultaneously press and release the off and large flame buttons on your remote control. Notice that the two buttons are connected with a white line and a spark graphic on the remote body to indicate the need to press both buttons for ignition. This is a safety feature designed to prevent children or pets from unintentionally igniting your appliance. Once the two buttons have been pressed, the receiver on the appliance will issue a series of beeps indicating the ignition sequence is underway. You may also hear a series of slight clicks or knocks from the appliance gas valve, as various safety features are engaged to release fuel to the pilot light. The control system will then send power to the pilot ignition system, and the igniter will generate sparks. The pilot will soon ignite. If a problem occurs during this ignition sequence, such as a lack of gas pressure, the receiver will generate an audible beep and the system will shut off. Wait two minutes for any pilot gas to dissipate, and then try the ignition sequence again. If the ignition sequence fails three times, contact your service provider. When the pilot lights successfully and the control system has confirmed the pilot is established, the receiver beeping will cease and the main burner fuel will be turned on. During burner operation, the user can adjust the flame level up and down as they wish by pressing the large or small flame buttons on the remote control. The appliance will continue to operate at the last indicated flame height setting until the user selects a different flame height setting using the remote control. No automatic flame height modulation will occur in manual mode. Quickly pressing the large flame button twice will increase the burner flame to the maximum level. High will be indicated on the remote screen. Quickly pressing the small button twice will conversely decrease the burner flame to the lowest possible setting and is indicated on the remote screen as low. To completely turn the stove off in manual mode, simply press the off button. During cold weather spells, the user may find it beneficial to leave the stove pilot light on when not using the appliance. A pilot light will often keep the flue system warm and keep a draft established. If you would like to leave the pilot on but turn the appliance burner off, manually ignite as normal. Then, simply press the small flame button twice rapidly to place the system in the low burner setting. Once in that setting, 
simply continue pressing the low button until the main burner shuts fully off. You will notice that the pilot remains on. This is the standing pilot mode. If you would like to restart the burner from this standing pilot, simply quickly press the large flame button twice and the control system will turn the stove to high. You may also restart the burner from the standing pilot mode by pressing the large flame button multiple times until the burner reaches the flame height you desire. Again, to completely turn the stove off in manual mode, simply press the off button once. If the user is comfortable with operating the appliance in manual mode, they are more than welcome to do so. Remember to leave the remote control in manual mode on the LCD screen to assure proper performance. Please remember that the Maxitrol control system has an additional built-in safety timer to prevent prolonged unintentional burns. If the gas control system does not modulate over a period of six hours, the stove will automatically turn to standing pilot mode. During manual appliance operation, this modulation would be the user adjusting the flame level up or down using the remote. If after this initial six hour period of inactivity, the valve continues to see no modulation for a period of five additional days, the gas system will shut completely off. This concludes our discussion of the Maxitrol G6R remote control's basic features. To learn about operating your appliance in temp mode, please watch the Gas Appliances Module 2 video. And for details about timer mode, please watch Gas Appliances Module 3.